Hello! Welcome back to the Improv and D&D channel. Um, I am your host and Game Master, Matt, and we are... <laughs> we're so jazzed, y'all. Goodness. First off, we'll be playing the TTRPG game known as Flabbergasted, created by none other than the Wanderer's Tome, Fleur and Chelsea, which has just, just been fully released so I'm going to drop a quick link in case y'all want to check it out. It has been such a blast uh, running this and playing this. I'm addicted. But uh, welcome out, everybody. Y'all are, are incredible. Goodness. Um, before we get underway, well, let's introduce, introduce everyone to our wonderful cast uh, for each of y'all, of course. Uh, I need I need your name, your pronouns, anything you have to promote, your character name, character pronouns, and a quick blurb about your character. Let's start with Haley or Kaylee. My apologies, Kaylee with Henry on deck. No problem, hat. All good. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, I'm Kaylee. Uh, my pronouns are she, they. Um, when I am not doing this, um, you can find me, uh, working for the company Mastermind Adventures, uh, as an adventure specialist, um, and, uh, we run all sorts of, um, professional TTRPG games, um, all sorts, D&D, &D, Monster of the Week, Call of the Cthulhu, I think. We've just recently had a whole bunch of new games in Game Masters, so, um, check it out if if you have a chance. Um, oh, and then the character I'm playing is uh, Mungo Fitzgibbons. Uh, his pronouns are he, him. Um, Mungo is a uh, well-meaning but sort of bumbling uh, fool uh, <laughs> who often gets into situations. Um, we'll see how he gets out of this one. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, goodness. Thank you so much for being here, Kaylee. Uh, let's jump over to Henry with Liam on deck. Hi, I'm Henry, uh, he, him pronouns, and um, as per usual, I'm just a player who's happy to be here. I got really nothing to promote, actually. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to be, be playing uh, Vinny Volpes, uh, they, them, a professional consultant fixer. Uh, however, this is probably the biggest fix that she has to fix, uh, that Vinny has to fix in a long time, so... Yeah, it's going to be fun how, how Vinny's about to fix all this situation. So, yeah. <laughs> Great. Thank you so much, Henry. Let's kick it over to Liam with myself on deck. Hey, all. Uh, Liam here again. Uh, pronounce he, him. Today, I am playing Logan, um, a member of the staff. And... Logan is also very curious to see how Vinny is going to sort that one out. Uh, <laughs> it's just, it's so chaotic. Uh, Mongo is in so much trouble. It's just, it, even for a member of the staff such as myself that knows how to deal with a lot of situations at once, I think I'm very stretched. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Thank you so much, Liam. Oh my gosh. Of course, I'm Matt. Uh, I'll be your, uh, your DM, GM uh, director for this evening. Um, and oh goodness. Let's start things off with a little, a little recap. Uh, the chaos that has been happening um, at this party. Uh, of course, we started last session off with a problem being redeemed by chat. As, of course, Logan was being mistaken for Mungo, having Mungo's clothes, and is taken to Mungo's parents by Rosalind from a Null Globe, a rival social club. And Logan reveals himself to be Sir Gent, an alias, of course, and uh, a sponsor, in this case, of the Globe Trekker Society, our social club here. And Rosalind is embarrassed away. Um, however, in this, in the course of this discussion, Logan finds out that Mungo's parents intend to marry him to a Naomi Hoffman. Now, Mungo talks with a beautiful woman with curly brown hair and a blue dress. He speaks under his alias, 
Louis pleasure. And Mungo is able to charm yeah. her with the Manhattan and his smooth talking demeanor. Now, Vinny, Vinny goes to Catherine and finds out that the live leopard is someone that Catherine looks up to. In fact, Cat thinks that she and Vinny would get along very well. Vinny's directed the catacombs where they're able to get a new dress and makeup to disguise our lovely Bunny Fairbanks. Now, asking about Cat's family, it seems like Cat doesn't really talk about them much, but Cat does look up to Vinny quite a bit. Now, Mungo is able to convince a gentleman, Mortimer Goth, uh, a man who's lost his wife and lost his hope. Mungo is able to convince him to endorse the Globe Trekker Society and perhaps be willing to open himself up again. Logan, under his disguise, Sir Gent, is able to convince a woman with dirty jeans, a brown jacket, blonde hair, and the gravitas that he is a man of action and integrity. And this woman, Miss Varney, endorses the group as well. Vinny returns Bunny to the party, giving her a warning that Mungo might have to smooch up to others, a turn of phrase that leaves Bunny worried. But Vinny goes to find Cat again, but in that moment finds her replacement, a shift change, who reveals, after a little bit of pouting from Vinny, that she's gone to the catacombs, and then either the Arc de Triomphe or the Eiffel Tower. Mungo learns that Bunny's here, and is distracted, but Vinny keeps him on track. Now, he speaks with a woman with a flowing pink dress and long brown hair. She's got a smirk on her face as he talks to her. She grabs him by the arm to lead him to sweets. And in this moment, Logan notices and goes over to the woman in the blue dress, the woman that Mungo was talking with before, and leads her away from Mungo's parents. She has a look of jealousy and bitterness, seeing Mungo being grabbed by the arm. And we find out that this woman, the woman that Mungo had been talking to under the guise of Louis Pleasure, is the very Naomi Hoffman that Mungo's parents want him to marry. And of course, she said, at least I have this Mungo as a backup. Not knowing that they are, of course, one and the same. Now, Bunny notices that Mungo's leading this uh, woman in the pink dress by the arm and wants to run away. Vinny intercepts her, and just in the nick of time, as in that moment, we got another problem redeem, and Bunny turns just as that very woman steals a kiss from Mungo. But who did see this? Naomi. And she charges for Mungo. Now, in that moment, Vinny also urges Bunny to show Mungo exactly how much she cares for him. Mungo does see Naomi coming for him, but doesn't notice Bunny coming from behind. He tries to defuse the situation between Naomi and the woman in the pink dress before he hears from behind him Bunny's voice dripping with sadness. And that moment is interrupted as the announcers call out that they believe they found the Lime Leopard. And Logan overhears that they're trying to keep it under wraps, but they believe the suspect, the Lime Leopard, is likely at the Arc de Triomphe. And it is at this point, with the Lime Leopard's location known by Logan, with Vinny knowing that Kat's location is either the Arc de Triomphe or the Eiffel Tower, and with Mungo surrounded by three women whose hearts he has stolen. The smirking woman in the pink dress, the arranged fiancé Naomi Hoffman, and his own love, Bunny Fairbanks. And it's at this moment that we begin with Logan. Logan, you have a very critical bit of information. What do you want to do?
Uh, Logan, you're muted. Yes, I am indeed. Here I am. I am. Um, I'm going to locate Vinny. Can I see Vinny from where I am? I would say so. I'd say like cool. uh, based on um, the way y'all have been moving, the way y'all have been operating, you've been doing your best to keep an eye on each other, especially as chaos is unfolding around you. So you'd definitely be able to locate them. Amazing. Um, it's probably the bright red hair that gives them away. Uh, <laughs> so yes, I'm gonna make my way towards Vinny, uh, and um, I will just um, excuse me, uh, Vinny. Yeah. Uh, hi. Um, so I have heard the lime leopard has been spotted at the Arc de Triomphe. Um, I do see an opportunity for us here, but, um, and then I awkwardly look towards Mongo and I'm like, we also have a situation here. Um, thoughts, ideas. Um, yeah, I think as soon as you like come to Vinny, like Vinny is like, <laughs> like as I don't know how disheveled Vinny could be, but I think this is the first time you're seeing like a couple of screws actually being loose because <laughs> this is way out of Vinny's hand. Um, usually Vinny has a plan and usually and 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 this time he really doesn't <laughs> like he's like there's so many moving variables that that uh, Vinny needs to think of that he, he didn't really think of and uh you know having having three um you know thirsty women uh <laughs> going for mungo are are thirsty. very dangerous and volatile <laughs> um variables so um and then knowing the fact that um logan just gave the information that uh, the lime leopard is at the um Arc de Triomphe, but I think at this point Vinny has probably deduced that Cad possibly could be the Lime Leopard. It's, it's like great, two things to deal with. And so, yeah, Vinny goes ahead and just ponders, th like, as hard as she could, like, you know, think of whatever sort of situation that she could, um, Vinny could do. And uh, Vinny just turns to Logan and says, Right. So, this is an absolute. Well, I'm 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 sorry to say this. Can I swear? I can't swear. Uh, no. Um, this is an absolute show. Um, <laughs> I hate this. I hate this so much. Um, we definitely need to get the Arc de Triomphe and to get Mongol out of here. We need a reset. We need a hard, hard reset on what we were doing here. Um, and I think I just have the idea. It may be crazy. But it'll give us the reset that we need. <laughs> and Should I start I looking for the fuse box? Yeah. <laughs> You're on track. <laughs> <laughs> or just find something, smash the chandelier. I don't really care. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, yes. Yes. Yes, Logan. Um, do your thing. Steal something. Um, I feel like this this whole this whole um, thing that we're doing is not we're not in our element here. <laughs> Mungo's doing the thing that I should be doing. <laughs> well, I mean, you you're you're still doing that what you're doing best, but I feel like Mungo and my my roles have been switched. So we need a hard reset on that. So yes, go find a fuse box. I'll try to find something like uh, I don't know. I'll go get a good start. I'll go get a disguise. Why not? I'm gonna. No worries. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, as soon as uh, you say we need a distraction, I kind of start looking around. Um, and I'm gonna look for a member of the staff. Okay. Sounds good. Um, um, all right. Staff, like whether it's, if it's someone that's part of security, it's even better. Uh, but any member of staff will do. Okay, great. In this case, um, I'd say uh, you do find someone who seems to be dressed like security. They have a uh, a very um, imposing figure um, that's hidden 
uh, a little bit by a very nice straightened out suit uh, and tie. Uh, it looks like they have like one of those headpieces where they can hear from. Um, and uh, they're, they're, they're standing and they're keeping an eye out, but you do spot them. How would you like to approach this? Um, so I am, um, I am dressed. I, I guess I am in my aristocrat. Um, yeah, you're dressed like Mungo. At outfit. Uh, it might be ill-fitting, but right. I'm still wearing it. Um, <clears throat> and so I'm going to go up to this person and I will look the aim here is to look like I'm trying to keep it together but failing mm -hmm. uh, and I'm just going to look at him in the eye and I'm like sir I need you to I the uh I'm so there's there there's a situation there's there's been a can, can you can you smell it yet I think and I, I'm going to try to like get him to like try to I'm trying to get him to ask me what's going on to like really lure him into into that situation. OK, OK. Uh, in this case, do you mind doing a I believe bravado and persuasion for me? Sounds good. Um, I will point out that uh, someone did redeem a trouble oh, I know. Uh, while you were doing the recap. I know. We're going to check it. <laughs> We also have a re-roll, too, so whoever gets the trouble, we'll see who gets the Great. trouble. Great, give us a trouble, and then we'll also get a re-roll. Yes, thank you. Thank yeah. you so much, Chad. Yes. <laughs> uh, so right now, I've got no successes. All right. One, so one, two, and three. This this gentleman um, hears you say that and says, where, where did you get those clothes? Uh, I think I'm going to throw caution to the wind and I, I'm just going to really start panicking and I'm going to be like, you don't, you don't, you don't understand. And I kind of grab him by the collar and I'll just scream at the top of my lungs. There's a fire. There's a fire. <laughs> and I'll just make the biggest scene screaming that there's a fire happening. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. So when you do that, uh, a fair number of people around you are starting to murmur and like the panic is starting to grow. And, but this gentleman, um, like you see him put his hands up to his earpiece and say, I believe I've located one of them. And then <laughs> grab you by the arm and start leading you uh, towards, uh, in this case, in this particular um side of the museum uh towards like a side exhibit hall nice i'm gonna keep screaming there's a fire all the way through okay great great you are starting to drum up a bit of a panic though it looks like whoever whoever you're talking to leading you towards that side exhibit hall is not uh gearing towards escape now I'm gonna come back to you. We'll go over yeah. to uh, Vinny. Vinny, the the calls for fire in this museum, in this area. Uh, people are starting to murmur. People are starting to panic. What would you like to do, Vinny? Right, where's the nearest light switch? <laughs> oh. and, how, and, how, and how can I break it? <laughs> oh, snap. Okay, okay. Why don't you roll three die six for me? I'll see. Three die, three die six. All right. Yes. Okay. This is like my standard perception rule. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, okay. So I got a one six. So I only one okay. six. Okay. Okay. You're able to find one with one success. That's I probably about twenty feet away from where you are. Mm -hmm. Um, and in that case, like breaking it would not be very difficult. And this, I I would say that generally speaking, um, mm -hmm. the the, the way that when it comes to these parties, when it comes to these functions, mm -hmm. um, there there's a certain level of um, 
I guess, decorum that they expect, <laughs> in which case they don't expect anyone to cause chaos like that. Because it would be, <laughs> I imagine, like, if someone brought their children to this party and they started messing around, that would that would be a big mark, a, a taint on their reputation. So it's easy to access. It's easy to get to. So <laughs> you can get there very quickly. What are you going to do? Yeah. Well, well, uh, Vinny is both a child and a uh, someone who doesn't have that much reputation. So uh, <laughs> uh, Vinny will do exactly um, that. Um, I guess, let's see, what's the most creative way to break a, a light switch? I think I just go ahead and just get like one of those champagne flutes as uh, one of the like waiters are like passing by. Like Vinny just grabs one, takes a little sip. It's like, well, it's a shame I have to waste this and just throws it. At, at the light switch <laughs> to hopefully like you know cause like an electrical surge to blow out every single light in 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 the um, in the hall that we're in fantastic fantastic okay okay so in this case here's what i'll do you're, you're doing you're doing something pretty pretty bold here um uh, oh my we have gosh to. <laughs> <laughs> okay okay um while you're doing that I do want to see, I want to see what Mungo does in, he doesn't know how long this period of lit is. <laughs> Mungo, you had the, the smirking woman in the pink dress with long brown hair. There's the woman with the curly brown hair and the blue dress. And then there's, of course, Bunny, the love of your life. What do you do? Uh, for a moment, Mungo just sort of like stares, looks between everyone, including his parents, it's a little bit of like deer caught in headlights. And, you know, both like deer caught in headlights and like kid with, you know, their hands stuck in the cookie jar. Um, and then seems to sort of like make some sort of... Uh, some sort of resoluteness from somewhere sort of takes him over and he sort of straightens up his posture. He says, I'm sorry, this has all been a terrible mistake. I'm very sorry for, for the harm that I've caused here, but my true love is is out there. And it's it's, it's bunny. It's, I should I should have clarified that. It's not just like that, there's a specific person, but also like it's entirely up to her, obviously whether she would want me in the first place. So I leave that. I'm going to stop talking. So here's what I'm going to need because there is a bit of chaos here. Um, I would like you to roll a, um, in this case, I'll say either bravado and persuasion or wit and sharp to, to be able to communicate mm -hmm. here loudly enough because people are starting to yell and scream about a fire. So you choose okay. which of yeah. those two roles. I I'm gonna make it bravado and persuasion, and not just because I have slightly better stats than that, but also because <laughs> I do think this is like full bravado. Like yeah. this is not this is not a witty or sharp decision that he's making. Um, this is just fully uh, just going with going with his heart. Okay. Okay, that's, um, I think that's two successes, actually. I lost one of the dice, but that's a five and nice, six. Nice, nice. Okay, okay, yeah. Your, your, your voice is able to cut through the noise, cut through everyone panicking, everyone being scared, right as the lights go out, and it's sheer pandemonium. Everyone is going crazy. Um, Vinny, your, your, uh, drink on the light switch is able to, uh, mm. like you, you hear it crackle and all the lights in this area with er all the party goers go out, people are going wild. And, um, right now, Mungo in the dark, you communicate this. You have no idea what the reactions are. What do you do? Where do you go? Uh... I I sort of I just like start stumbling through the darkness like at any time 
uh, Mungo's hand brushes against someone. He just goes, "Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. I, I need to, I, I need to find my friends." Um, and so he's going to look for um, Logan and Vinny somehow, just by, you know, uh, m- making his way through the the room with the, with only his sense of touch. Sounds good. Sounds good. Okay. Okay. So I'd say that. Vinny, you can definitely hear the very mm-hmm. apologetic Mungo saying sorry <laughs> to everyone amidst everything. Because I, I like to think of it like this. With everyone panicking and kind of yelling at top volume, top pitch and everything, Mungo's like fairly understated, <laughs> yeah. low, I'm sorry. That that stands out amidst all of that. But it's beautifully I, harmonizing. Exactly. I want you all to consider... Like, I'd say Vinny would be able to find Mungo in the darkness, but y'all consider <laughs> what you want to do next because I do need to deal with a problem. And Logan, as you're taken into that side hall, the, the tall security person opens the door, throws you in, and then closes the door behind you. And then in this room, you see three gentlemen. There's two, again, big, imposing, having the same sort of uh, suit, the little earpiece. But there's also a gentleman whose whose outfit is uh, fairly gaudy. Um, you can see that it looks like he's he's intended for everything to be very showy. So you know, if you were to look look up, like, guess, it's, it's the one that's right in the window. If you were to look at his suit, everything is very clear. It's sort of like the supreme of the time, where you see the brand right there. And he says, Don't I recognize you from Portugal. What do you do? Do I recognize him? Sorry. Oh yeah. This R- is the me, gentleman been a while. who was left at the altar That's by what I thought. Vinny, who That's had what I thought. Uh, had his eyes on, of course, a woman who y'all saved from a loveless marriage. In this case, a, a loveless engagement. Um, and then had his eyes set on Bunny for a time before Vinny stepped in. But he's here. He has two goons with him, as well as the one who just closed the door behind you. And this is, of course, the, the problem that was redeemed by Minutus. Thank you very much. What hmm. What is your first instinct here, <clears throat> Logan? Uh, I think Logan's just gonna like straighten his clothes and everything and like upon recognizing this person Mm -hmm. um, he's going to like make a point to not look directly at them just kind of like look up to the side look into the room just kind of keep moving so like the face isn't super visible right Um, I'll tell you this In this room, when you're not looking at him, you would notice that he's arranged the first two rows here of desks. This seems to be like a little side classroom. And these desks have been arranged so that he can, uh, well, he's sitting at one of the desks, but the others have just kind of been shifted to the side. To your right, you would notice a front podium. There's a chalkboard. There's also windows uh, along the, the far wall as well as well as another door maybe uh 50 feet down on the left which level are we on um y'all are on the main floor so ground floor yes exactly yeah cool cool just making sure just in case i need to make an exit um all right and yeah i'm just gonna like readjust my oversized Close. Or oversized or too small? No, oversized. Oversized. Um, yes. Yeah. 
my oversized clothes, uh, and I will be like, well, um, sir, if you've been in Piccadilly a couple of times, uh, you probably would. Um, and I kind of approach and I extend my hand still without making eye contact. And I'm like, uh, Sergeant, nice to meet you. Hmm. I don't think so. You look like well, one of one of the people that I'd met met once upon a time. One back in that that bar. Wait, I, I still got my hand and I kind of keep looking up and down in my hand like you gonna shake it or not? He's not shaking it. Does he I, I keep like looking up and down at him like does he look down at my hand at any point in time? He does for a moment. When when he does, I, I I do I do that thing. You know when when you when you point at somebody's shirt and you're like, oh my gosh, you got something there, and then you kind of flick their <laughs> nose back up. <laughs> okay, okay, <laughs> great, great. Uh, so I I I kind of flick his nose. I kind of do it. I I have a bit of a chuckle about it, and I'm like. I go to many bars. I don't often remember what happens in them. Well, with that, he immediately says, Get him! And then his two goons start coming at you. And it is at that moment the lights go out. What are you going to do? Um... You hear them bounding towards you. Before the lights went out, did I get to see? Did I did I have a clear path to the windows? Um, I'd say that you might have to. You might, in that case, you might have to make it over a couple desks to get to the right. windows. Unless you want to take the long way around, but the long way mm -hmm. around, their likelihood of catching up to you is pretty high. No, nah, no, nah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna parkour. Parkour! Okay. okay. <laughs> Parkour in the dark. Parkour. Great. I mean, I mean, parkour in the dark sounds like a recipe for a bravado roll. So, show me what you got. Come on, dice. That's two successes. Two sixes. Okay. Great, great in this case, like as they're coming for you, like you can you can kind of sense where they're coming from. They're taking the most direct path and you're able to bound and leap from uh like <coughs> just the, the the little the little side thing that's attached to the the uh the desk part and the chair part and then onto the next desk, onto the next desk, and you you feel as your hand touches cool glass. It's you can you can kind of hear just a little bit of of rain outside. Now, at this point, as you reach the window, I'm going to come back to you in a second. Vinny <laughs> and Mungo, the two of you in the dark in the main hall amidst the cries for fire. What do you do? So I imagine like both of us were like uh, reconvened at this point, uh, right? Yes. Okay. Okay. Um, where exactly do you think that we're reconvened? Are we still in like main chaos of the main hall or have we like secluded ourselves into like a, like the hallway? Like, oh. I, I don't know. That's up to you. I'd say definitely in, in the main chaos because Mungo <laughs> was in the thick of things. <laughs> Okay. And Mungo being so apologetic, Vinny, you would okay. be the one who would probably have to locate him yeah. to guide okay. there. I would yeah, also yeah. say, like, definitely Mungo just sort of blindly walking forward with, like, his yeah. arms outstretched, definitely just, like, puts a hand on, like, Vinny's face and is like, <laughs> oh, okay. If, like, Vinny says something, he's like, oh, hi, hello, oh, I'm glad I found you. And I just grab your hand. I'm just yeah. like, okay, Ooh. we need to, <laughs> yeah, we need to talk. And it's <laughs> yeah. like, just grab Mungo. Yeah. Yeah. Out, out of the chaos somehow i don't i don't i don't think we're in the hallway where um the security led um logan but i think we just right. we just find ourselves into like you know like a restroom or whatever sort of mm -hmm. recluse in the main hall i don't know like where yeah. just some 
some way to talk, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I'd say in this case, um, uh, you would be able to get to like a, a side room. Um, and I'll, yeah, let's say, let's say a restroom. Let's go to the restroom. You get into a restroom. Um, yeah. And you can kind of hear, uh, you, you, I'd say you probably hear someone in there say, hey, who turned the light out? Uh, just a technical, just a, some, some technical difficulties. Uh, it, it's fine. I'm, I'm sure they'll be on it. And I just like, um, yeah, just like go ahead and just like uh, usher Mungo to like a small corner where like we're out of earshot of that person. It's like, right, Mungo. <laughs> Um, I've made a mess of everything. I've made just no, 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 never going to love me now. No, what have I done? no, right Mungo, now. you know, I mean, I think this is our whole shtick as a group. We always mess things up, but that's the reason why you have me as a fixer in your crew because we always somehow patch things up, even though it's like a you know, a band aid on an opening wound, but it's still a band aid, nevertheless, it will heal. Um, well, that's that's very kind, but I'm I'm afraid I think it's too late for me this time. No, I think no. Bunny still loves you. I've been talking to her throughout your time, just going around. Wait, what did, what uh, did she say? She said that she loves you. She 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 holds it dearly, and she was trying very was hard before, to. That was before all this. No, I think she oh, does. I was a, I was the one who got I was the one who brought her her to you, because I thought it will. Because Bunny has been always so passive. And finally seeing her so, you know, to dominate her position as your true love, I think is an indication of that. And I don't think, I, I don't know if I heard uh, Mungo saying this proclamation out loud to, mm -hmm. no, I think I did. Because like, yeah, with your success. Yeah. And Mungo, with your proclamation, I think that definitely has hit, hit something deep. Because no one else knows about your true identity but Bunny. I could definitely tell that Bunny could, uh, that has definitely affected Bunny a lot. Well, I don't, uh, Yeah. I think it's been a bit complicated by, by everything else, but never mind that. What's, yes. We, we've got to deal with the, the situation. Currently. Yeah. Is there got... a fire? What's going on? No, there's no fire. Um, it's, it, it was sort of our ploy to somehow get out of this. Um, but anyway, so, couple of things um i'm sure that my friends uh well yeah moving things my friend cats the one that you guys saw earlier on that was you know doing the con deal with like the tickets and stuff yeah i think she might be in trouble so i need to go help her with that i don't know where logan is though he he he, he was off just trying to start the whole commotion but i haven't heard from him since which is a little bit worrying um, and also your situation with the, you know, the, the group and, you know, the competition and stuff. So all I could say is let's deal with, we'll, we'll deal with the competition later. Let's try to find Logan first. However, I think it's better to say that leave the, you know, heartbreaking to me because I am a man, I, I, I am a person who has no affiliation. I mean, I don't know if you know about Miss Mungo, but I was I was an orphan when, when growing up. And oh. yeah, I I did I have no affiliations, I have no ties to anyone, which makes me the perfect fixer to do all this stuff. So I'm sorry for that. No, it's fine, it's fine. But right. that's to say, you have a bright future ahead of you, Mungo. Don't not do not let that waste away. And you have someone who loves you very, very dearly. Excellent. Let's, Let's go, go find Logan. <laughs> <laughs> great. Great. Where are you going to go to find oh. Logan? God, I think... I'm going to follow Vinny. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's fair. Um, I I don't know where Logan went. Is there an indication where I know where he, he has gone or no? Why don't you roll three die six for me? I'll see oh, if God. maybe you saw... As Logan was calling out fire. Okay. Um, uh, one, four, and one. Ah, I don't see anything. Hey, we do have a reroll banked right now. If y'all if y'all feel the need to use it. Yeah. Shall I use it? Or do you think we should leave it to somewhere else? 
Up to you. I mean, this doesn't feel super, super dire. I mean, we Fair. we okay. split we, we split the party without Too being bad. separated. So yeah. I'm mm. sure we'll bump into each other somewhere along the way. Plus, mm. I know that you're likely to go to the Arc de Triomphe because I told you that's where yeah. the Lime Leopard is. So Yeah, that's true. But it's like, yeah, I think I think Vinny right now is like I think in, her, in their mindset, they're like, okay, you know, we're trying to fix this, but first we need to get a whole group back to actually, you know, come up with the actual plan rather than just going with the flow. <laughs> so, your call. Yeah. Okay. I'll, I'll reroll it. Uh, hopefully, this doesn't go to waste. So, great. It's a three. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, as always. Um, Oh, yeah. Snap. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I think it's just a great sense of urgency. I guess it's like, Did okay, we need to all your three die six. Oh wait, is it all three? All three. Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh, oh. Okay, yeah. I yeah. I didn't do that. I don't want to cheat you out of it. Okay, one five. Jesus. <laughs> okay. Okay. Great. Yeah, you definitely saw that taller gentleman, um, in in the in the suit with the the earpiece. Take mm -hmm. Logan. Uh, towards one of the side classrooms. Okay. And then right, okay. I'd say, like, maybe as the chaos is unfolding, as right before you splashed, mm -hmm. you did see that gentleman exit that room mm -hmm. and stand posted outside of it. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. So I think I just lead uh, Vinny. Vinny. Um, I don't know. I, I lead Mongol. And it's like, I think Logan might be in trouble. Yeah, it's like, and I just like uh, take Mongo, like just to somehow like crouch. I don't know, like peering into like, like I don't know, in mist of darkness. Um, I guess then you could still see the silhouettes of the <laughs> of of the, the outline of this hulking figure yeah, outside. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. I'd say that okay. you could definitely notice that he he does seem to like have his head down, and he's like trying to make sure. He's like saying, um. Sir, is, is everything okay? Um, yeah. And, uh, like, you, you notice him recoil a little bit, as you can mm -hmm. hear in his headpiece, mm -hmm. just someone yelling from <laughs> the other end. Yeah. And, uh, Logan, you're hearing it directly as the, the guy is saying, Come on, there's two of you! Get him! Get him! <laughs> so, uh, while Vinny and Mungo, y'all think about how you want to approach this. Mm. Logan, you've reached the window. Mm. What would you like to do? Hmm. Risk it for the biscuit. Uh, <laughs> I've got a really terrible idea. Do it. Yes. Uh, hey, I'll give you a lucky coin if you do that <clears throat> terrible idea. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. No, that sounds great. That sounds perfect. So I get to the window and I've got my hands on it. Mm -hmm. uh, and I realize that there is potential for something here. Okay. Uh, and I vaguely remember the setup of the room and where everybody was. Yeah. Assuming he hasn't moved too much. Uh, I'm going to slam the windows open, like make sure I make a lot of noise so people mm -hmm. know to come to this window because that's where I exited out of uh, to like attract the goons. And then I'm going to, if I'm picturing the room properly, I'm already on the other side of the desks now. So if I go around the desks, I'll eventually get to this aristocrat person. Uh, and I'm going to try to pat him down for the card uh, that has like the three stars to be inputted oh. in them. Oh. <laughs> I'm okay. going to try to make the best of this situation. Okay. Okay. So. For... And I don't necessarily need to be discreet about it. I just need right. to be quick about right. it. Right. So first, for the window plan, I want you to do a creativity roll for me. Oh, that's not going to go well. And now I have awarded you with a lucky coin. For everyone new to Flabbergasted, when you have a lucky coin, it allows you to add on another flip. And this flip 
uh, you call it, if you get it, that's a success. So basically it's like another roll that uh, has a 50-50 instead of a 33% chance, so. All right. Well, I'm going to see what I get on the one die. Do it. No, nope, that's a two. Um, so let's flip it. All right. All right. Flippy flip. All right. Do you want to flip your coin? I don't have a coin. I'll call it when you flip it. Oh, I can do that. Absolutely. Heads. I'm sorry. Yeah. That is a fail. Okay. So. All right. So first part of the plan, not working so well. Right. So what happens here is uh, you go to um, you go to slam open the windows. And unfortunately, it's it's taking you just a little bit longer than you had hoped. It seems like there's just some mechanisms that it, maybe these windows haven't been opened very, very much. And so it's like it takes you a couple tries. And by the time you get it open, you end up losing your balance a little bit. Um, and in that case, it's like you're kind of hung up on the window and you feel those arms grab you from behind and pull you back, back towards that, uh, that gentleman. But I mean, gentlemen, I'm using the term loosely, but are they, are they grabbing at my pants, jacket? What is it? Um, I'd say one of them immediately grabs onto your leg. Uh -huh. uh, and then the other one grabs onto like the back of your uh, jacket. Now I am wearing extremely oversized clothing. True, true. So maybe I can utilize that uh, and maybe try to slip out. Of give, give me a little jacket. wit and sharp, please. <laughs> I'm going to end up half naked in a rainy street, but I'm going to get away. <laughs> <laughs> all right that's two successes great one for the pants one excellent. for the jacket <laughs> excellent so yes you're able to wriggle your way out um and now you're pantsless you're <coughs> jacketless <coughs> and the rain is pouring down it feels like just looking up 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 to the skies um that the rain uh is going to intensify but um like you you hear grunts of frustration and uh you, you're, able, you're able to land onto onto grass onto just a little patch of grass um and you're free where do you want to go uh i'm going to run and I mean, do I even know which direction the entrance is or where anything is in this place? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, once you're outside, um, I'd say like with the street lamps, with the moonlight, though it is raining a little bit, you'd be mm. able to easily follow the wall around to get towards the entrance. Cool. I'm going to do that. And when I get to the entrance, um. Uh, like, did my fire, fire, oh my god, there's a fire thing. Is that working? Did a bunch oh, yeah. of people come they, out? People are people are pouring out from nice. all the exits. Um, so I'd say, like, the, the journey to the entrance. I'll come back to you in a second. Okay, no worries. Um, Vinny and Mungo, from where you are, as you're keeping an eye on the gentleman at the front, you hear that voice cut through again. Um, in his headset to the point where he like pulls his headset out of his ear but you hear the barking and I mean also through the door of how could you how could you idiots let the, let him get away we had him sorry Henry if you're saying something it looks like oh, you're muted yeah, yeah I'm muted uh, yeah so I guess at that point we already know who it is right like throughout the tone the oh, voice yeah Oh, yeah. yeah absolutely yeah but i think that's i think i think it's like oh crap this dude again i can't believe he's here jesus christ you know learn you know uh i don't know just just take the hint just, just maybe just don't date <laughs> um <laughs> 
work on your personality first. I don't know. I, I don't think I'm the person to fix that. But anyway, um, but Logan's okay. I think with that, I guess it, it, it's a clear indication that Logan is okay. He got away. Mm-hmm. Okay. So it's like, I don't know if I'm metagaming here, but I think with that, I think Vinny was just like, okay, crap. This guy's here. So um, don't want to mess with him. Let's get out of here immediately. <laughs> <laughs> okay okay yeah and also it's still pretty dark like i guess it makes sense and also it makes sense that you know we know now that logan has escaped so presumably logan is also heading out yeah mm-hmm. yeah absolutely okay absolutely yeah. okay okay so um in this case uh i'd say question are you mm-hmm. two inclined to follow the waves of the people i'd say most of the people are heading towards the main exit or are you gonna try to go for a more secluded like side exit somewhere what do you think what do you think mongo let's see do we think um logan would have gone out you know the regular way it seems like more like Logan would have gone a sideway now. Yeah. I mean, I guess because he was in a room. So in a room, it's either that he had to go through a door or a window. So probably a less com- less uh, use uh, en- entrance possibly. So I don't know. I guess I guess what's the status? Like, well, we'll go secluded. We don't, we already cause ourselves too much trouble, I feel like. And also if people know that that we're here or people have recognized us they probably will be best to not be with the crowd perhaps yeah okay okay yeah. great great uh, also mongo is also just hoping not to run into bunny again or his parents or either of the other women so <laughs> like, i would like to get out of here please i've made a fool of myself fantastic fantastic okay okay y'all are going over to the side um, and Logan, now, as you follow the side, going towards the, uh, towards an exit, um, how about I leave it up to the roll of the dice? Um, so, could I have both Kaylee and Henry roll a d6, and I'm also going to have Liam roll a d6, if... Either of you, Kaylee or Henry, happen to get the same number as Liam. You found the same exit. Okay. Nice. I love that. Okay, cool. All right. I'm going to use my... Uh, Liam, which one? Which one's your favorite color? Purple or blue? Or I don't know. Which color do you prefer? Go for purple. All right. Cool. Let's go for purple. I'm just going to go for these little kitty dice. Let's see. Great. I love cats. So, yeah. Let's... Okay, I rolled mine. I rolled Shall- mine. Okay. Shall we say it? Okay. <laughs> Let's go Who's to going? Kaylee first. Okay, I got a two. Two. Henry. Six. Six. Liam. Damn. Oh, no. <laughs> Shake okay. on with a per- okay. Shake okay. on with a blue die. <laughs> uh, the two of you get to one of those side exits, and then you overhear something, and um. Thank you so much for the hydrate, Kohami. I appreciate it. But in this moment, oh, the two of you would overhear some people yelling, uh, fire and a streaker? What? <laughs> and you would know that seems to be coming from uh, closer to the main entrance. Logan okay. at... Right now, there are lots of people who are pouring out, and they some of them are seeing you, and they have, like, looks of shock. And they're like, no pants, no jacket. Uh, and they start running away. <laughs> Reminds me of a Blink-182 album. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, first, Logan, what are you going to do? Uh, if I've already been spotted... Uh, I think I want to give people as little chance to recognize me as possible. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I'm just going to bolt. 
I'm just going to keep my head down. Um, and I'm just going to bolt to get out of sight. Okay. Okay. Are you looking for like a, a bush or an alleyway or an establishment that you could go into? Parking garage? Uh, I mean, parking garage would be nice because that's where the car's at. But I imagine there'd True. be a lot of people in there uh, because everybody's trying to get out. That's fair. Uh, no, I think I'm just going to run into the streets of Paris. <laughs> okay. It's, it, it, surely it's Paris. It's not, it's not the weirdest thing they've seen today, <laughs> I'm sure. I'll say this. The, I'd say the... Uh... Most of the people do think that you are a nude downstairs because you are wearing an oversized shirt. So, oh yeah, true. Um, you're you're yeah, you're you're sprinting through. Um, in that case, as you run into the streets of Paris, it's art. Where yeah. Paris, it's, <laughs> art. <laughs> it's um, all part of the show. Exactly, Vinny and Mungo. You hear about the streaker. Um, there's, there's like chaos. What, what are, where are the two of you going to go? <laughs> uh, I just, I just face palm myself like, oh God. So Liam's naked. So Logan's naked <laughs> now. Great. Oh, uh, Logan, what have you, what have you done? <laughs> anyway. Um, oh, no one's still thinking he's me. <laughs> oh crap yeah i mean i don't have the jacket and i don't have the pants right. anymore for someone to recognize you yeah. based on the shirt alone no. and the difference in size no actually i would love the fact that mongo's thought is like oh god i hope they just don't think that's me <laughs> oh yeah yeah that's absolutely a thought yeah yeah, yeah. because he's all right as far as he's convinced he's already had just like a terrible showing that yeah I know. <laughs> it's like great now i'm streaking yeah, from my parents no <laughs> right. um no no it's fair um i think we just go straight to like where 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 the commotion is great and uh, yeah and i think um i feel like i want to like ask one of like the bystanders who was like you know like evacuating from like the the, the, the building and just to ask him just like Hey, um, sorry. We we work with this um, work with this private agency that deals with streakers. Um, any idea where the streaker went? By the way, <laughs> a private agency that deals with streakers. Great, great. So that um, that's our next club. You know what? We're not going to be the we're not oh going to be gosh. the globe trackers anymore. <laughs> oh goodness. So I need you to choose either bravado and persuasion or wit and sharp. I feel like it would fit under either of those categories. Okay, uh, I'm going to do bravado and persuasion. Uh, Vinny's a lot more persuasive than that. He's he got, she's, uh, oh, wow, three successes. <laughs> three successes. <laughs> Two sixes and then a five. Okay, so like the people you're talking with immediately point you in a direction and you see, you see. Logan, <coughs> shirt, you don't really see what's going on beneath the shirt because it is Mungo sized. Um, so for all intents and purposes, he's naked uh, from the torso down. Oh. Um, but Mungo, I need you to roll one die six for me. All right, uh, let's do a different one than last This time. is, of course, if you roll a one, you run into your parents. Well, I don't know if you can see that because uh, it will be blurred. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah, snap. Okay. Oh, no. Okay. So, Vinny, you see Logan off in the distance running into the streets of Paris, half nude. Mungo, you see Papa and Mama Fitzgibbon. And they see you. They they see you. Um, and like Papa Fitzgibbons is a little unsure because he's already been wrong once this evening. But Mama Fitzgibbons, eyes wide, looking at you. And then you see her her uh, gaze fall to the clothes you're wearing. 
which are, of course, Logan's clothes. What do you do? Do as Logan would run. Hello, Mama. Hello, P Papa. Mongo. There's. I'm sorry. I I, I must dash. Uh, I thought, yeah, I will start running. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. Okay. Mo uh, so we have Mungo running. Vinny, are you running after Logan as well? I think I think just for comedic effect, I think I think just like that was Vinny's plan, but Vinny didn't expect Mungo running uh, you know, first. So I think you just see Papa and Mama Fist Gibbons standing there, which is Vinny. And then Vinny just like up aghast as uh, uh, of the initiative that Mungo has shown. And then just turns around to Papa and Mama. He's going to just like, hi, lovely to see you. Um, by the way, your boy is absolutely fantastic. He's going to grow up to be very well. Uh, I have to catch up with him. Bye. <laughs> just run off, to, run off to catch him up. Okay. Okay. Oh, my gosh. So, Mungo and Vinny running away from the Fitzgibbons, from Mungo's parents. All right, I'm going to make a special note of that for for potential problems in the future. But the two of you run. Uh, Logan, as you run out into the streets, um, the rain beating down on you, you do note two figures running towards you. And though the wet, um, unmistakable, of course, they're your friends. They're your friends and allies. Vinny and Mungo. What do you do, Logan? Uh, anybody else running after them? Well, I'd say you can see from beyond them. Um, you see an, well, Mungo's parents, who you've spoken with directly. You see them, and not only that, they see you, too. <laughs> They see who they believe is Sir Jet, <laughs> who they believe is the sponsor of the Globe Trekker Society. Oh no. Naked from the waist down in the middle of a Parisian street. Oh boy. Gosh, this is the moment where I wish I hadn't used my unseen and unnoticed thank uh, you. <laughs> Um, okay, um, what can we do? Uh, well, while hmm. you're thinking, I do want to thank yes. Tactical Tommy Gun for the raid. Thank you so much. I appreciate you, Tommy. And also, my nudist and Kohami, y'all are on the same wavelength about how how Parisian and French. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, I mean, I got nothing. I'm just, I'm. Hey, I, I I think Logan's just like, that's a next time problem. Yeah, you're... Th this is not something I can deal with right now. Logan has been caught with his pants down. What can we say? Yeah, or lack of fans. <laughs> uh, okay, so... So, yeah, not, not gonna... I think once I see my friends and I know that they've seen me, uh, I'm just gonna keep running and find a side street somewhere where I can hide, and hopefully they can see where I've went and they can find me there. Great. That's That's the plan. Easy. Easy. You run, you run, you duck into a side alley, a side street, Vinny, Mungo, you see. And I would say that you notice, that you notice the look, the look of shock in Logan's eyes as he looks past you and then runs. But y'all three are able to reconvene in an alley. What do you do? What do you say? What's going on? 
Um, yes. Uh, is there? I think yeah. Vinny's wearing a coat. I would say right. Just immediately, just gives like their coat to like <laughs> to to Logan, who's like I can imagine just cold and just yeah, cold. Yeah. 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 I take my clothes back, and uh, Bungo is <laughs> undressing out of. Uh, oh uh, no, clothes. no, sir! It's it's fine. It's okay. I I would not have anything to return to you. Um, I'm very sorry about that. I may have misplaced yes. your pants and jacket. Yeah. Uh, but this is fine. This is fine. You can keep this. Yeah, what happened in that room, Logan? Like, we heard commotion, we heard screaming and shouting. Was that and... the gentleman from, from Porto? What, 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 what happened in that room stays in that room. But yes, <laughs> yes, it was. <laughs> oh, okay, but it did involve apparently somehow dressing you down, I imagine. Anyway, I won't press up too much on that. I appreciate that. No worries. Um, it's like my days in public school. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, that's as that I think. In or not a character? <laughs> <laughs> in character, uh, okay. the, the public, the British public school, of course. Okay. <laughs> um. Oh God. Yeah. So yeah, guys. Like, yeah. This is this is tough. <laughs> I don't know how we're gonna get out of this, but. Um, I, I'll see. It's problems for later. I think we have to get to the Arc de Triomphe. Yeah. That's fair. I mean, that's for my problem right now, but... I mean, we I left got... all our other problems behind. Yes. So now to deal with the problems ahead. Okay. <laughs> I, feel, I feel like... I feel like... Um, I am a person who feels that the, the more problems we deal with, the more that they actually come, up, come around to actually aid us in the end. And I feel like we need to get Catherine's, because I'm pretty sure she's the Lime Leopard. I, I, I'm absolutely not sure. She has told me nothing. But all of the signs seem to indicate that she is the Lime Leopard. So I feel like if we truly want to get out of this, perhaps we need her help to get her out of her situation first. What do you guys think? Um... Yes. Yeah, I'm in no. Uh, what's the opposite of a rush? I'm <laughs> a slow pace. <laughs> I'm not in a slow pace. I am in a rush. I suppose I should say uh, to get out of here because um, things are rather um, uh, bad at this at the moment, and I would yeah. like to to leave, please. Okay, that's fair. That's fair. Okay, so first we will deal with Catherine's situation. Then we'll deal with the rest of the problems along our way. I'll, I'll, I'll formulate something. I, I am a person who's very, very good at coming with things on the fly sometimes. But first, okay. um, get you some clothes. Get us some new clothes. They know us now. <laughs> um, can I activate my scene cube? Oh, yes, absolutely. What is for, it? First one. V, first v, one. I, VIP. You're well known around town and get tend to get recognized. I will run into old friends often. Whatever you are, you, you can usually find a familiar face or someone eager to schmooze with you. Exclusive places will also extend invitations to you. So I'm thinking something like a clothes shop, like the very fan, the fanciest clothes shop there is, pretty okay. much. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sounds like, good. Yeah, along the way of the Arc du Triomphe. I want to get us some new wear absolutely we're resetting this is a new start yes okay okay great great so in this case um since you're using the scene cube, what i was gonna do since you would be wanting to get clothes and all that i was gonna have y'all roll to see how quickly you could do that and also mm -hmm. get to the arc de triomphe because the authorities do know that their suspect is there. However, since you are using the scene queue, as far as timing goes, you'll be quick. You'll be able to get there and get <laughs> to the Arc de Triomphe. Now, at this point, with y'all sprinting, dashing, to, to, well, regain your dignity and get to save Cat, we are going to take 10-minute break. Ah. So, thank y'all so much for tuning in. We'll be back in about 10 minutes and see 
what happens if they're able to, to get to Cat in time, uh, and what their fancy new duds are going to be. So I hope y'all stay tuned for more chaos, and we'll be back in about 10 minutes. Hey y'all, welcome back to the Improv and D&D channel where we are of course rocking some flabbergasted action. Now I have typed up a, uh, I'd say a pretty extensive recap of what's going on, um, what's gone on so far uh, in our adventures in Paris right now as our squad is heading towards the Arc de Triomphe. Now, uh, before we left, Vinny cashed in a scene cue, a scene cue to uh, get some clothes, get some clothes very quickly. So I imagine in this case, of course, our, our characters show up to the store and the situation is immediately apparent on their faces. They're able to get the clothes quickly. Maybe it has just a little bit of a fashion show moment where two of the friends are like, mm -mm, to one of the selections, but we are able to find something and they're able to find them quickly, especially with the help of Vinny's friend. And as the three of them arrive at the Arc de Triomphe, um, I'm gonna have each of them describe what their characters are now wearing, starting with Mungo. So um, Mungo has, uh, I would say he's undergone a little bit of a, um, a glow up, uh, I believe, is what it's called. <laughs> um, well, first of all, he has gone from wearing, um, I mean, he was not wearing his own clothing. Um, he, was, he was wearing Logan's. But also um, now, but even before then, he sort of um, tended to wear a sort of like, not particularly fashionable, like sort of tweed suits and more about sort of practicality um, than, than uh, style. Um, perhaps, but, but this time he's, um, he's really gone up in the world, at least, you know, he has sort of, um, in a way he's sort of, uh, stood up to his parents a little bit. He's at least been able to admit his, his true feelings. So he's a little, you know, a little bit more confident. So yeah. he's got just like a very, um, nice, um, just very, um, smart pinstripe suit, um, instead of, uh, his usual bow tie. He's replaced it with a nice um, turtleneck underneath, a sort of a blue um, turtleneck, a little bit like now, sort of French new wave style. We're sort of borrowing oh, from, from different, <laughs> nice, different nice. time periods. Um, some uh, Italian leather uh, shoes. So, Excellent. You know, he's, he's got a little pep in his step as he as he goes along. Fantastic, fantastic. Uh, then let's kick it over to Vinny. What's what's Vinny wearing now? Uh, Vinny is, I think, suitable for his uh, caper that we're going through. Uh, is going with a Sa uh, Carmen Santiago kind of look. Um, Vinny has ditched the the sort of tomboyish wear for possibly even more tomboyish wear. But uh, but anyway, uh, it is definitely a vintage uh, double-breasted a overcoat. Um, Vinny has also got some black gloves as well. You know, don't want to leave any traces behind, you know, because uh, we definitely have a lot of that. And um, can I, can I just, I mean, this is a very exclusive clothing shop. Yeah. Is there any way that I could get a sort of, I mean, it's Paris. Somehow, like a masquerade fox max mask. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I think I think I think as like all of us have gotten our clothes and just leaving, I think Vinny just spots like the mask session, the se section of of the store. Mm -hmm. Spots one of the like the more elaborate fox masks and just uh, takes it and just uh, stores it away, possibly for future use. Fantastic. Mm. Fantastic. Okay, let's go over to Logan. What's Logan looking like now? All righty. <clears throat> so, Logan has probably never been so well-dressed in his entire life. Um, but he's kind of gotten a taste for the finer things, being able to impersonate an aristocrat for a little bit. Yeah. Uh, and... 
he he's kind of feeling good about having money, uh, although all of these things have happened for free. Uh, but he is now wearing a three-piece suit of matching um, kind of a muted blue-ish suit um, mm -hmm. with a plaid pattern, um, just like a mustard-looking plaid pattern across. He's got a striped tie, which up until now, he had like either a bow tie that was a bit loose or whatever, but now he's got it like really done up, really beautiful tie that goes well with it white shirt round shoes he gets a bit of a like three-quarter length jacket because you know it's it's raining outside but no matter what happens he sticks to his own hat uh that he just right. kind of secures on his head and as he walks out he looks sharp and he even he doesn't know how to handle himself so he's almost got that over the top confidence where he walks in like slow motion, you know, like <laughs> flicks his jacket, looks left, looks right, just like rolls his shoulder, like really just, it's almost like you could see in a movie, there's that slow motion scene that happens in his head. Then you get to see the same scene from the outside where he's just like. <laughs> 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 Um, but yeah, he feels good. He he reckons he's 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 the best looking man on the street. Great, and he's got pants now, so feeling good Excellent. about that. Yes, yes. So the three of you, done up, you're rocking and rolling. The rain coming down upon you. You're walking in slow motion towards the arc. De Triomphe. And here, as y'all are arriving, you know that, well, Vinny, mm -hmm. you know, you see that same sort of tape around the, the, uh, the, the tape, um, of before that you had seen in the catacombs that would block off certain areas. And right now it's blocking off the area that leads into the tunnels to get up up top mm -hmm. um, there aren't a lot of people here right now mm -hmm. there might be one or two that are willing to brave the mm -hmm. the rain and the mm -hmm. uh, overall weather and uh, but here you are where are you gonna go what are you gonna do so we're currently below where the after after Arc de Triomphe is, right? Or right, I'd say at this point you've got you you're seeing mm -hmm. it. Um mm -hmm. you're seeing it and there is a tunnel just off to the side that is mm -hmm. usually used to access if you need to go up top. Um at the moment you don't see Catherine. Um you might see like one or two people uh who are just sightseeing, braving mm -hmm. the weather. But at the mm -hmm. moment the rain beating down on you. You might hear a little bit of thunder. And see lightning. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. So, but no authorities there. Not it's yet. pretty too calm for what it is. Yeah, interesting. Right. Hmm. Okay. I think I just say to the other two is just like, right. I'm gonna go up on my. I'm gonna go up, scout out, just to see what hell, what the heck's going on. But if you two find, or if the authorities arrive or anything happens, give me a signal, and I'll try to think of something to get to get them out. But yeah, right, right, right away it is. Okay. What's the signal? Come up with Again, one. I'm still I'll, feeling fancy. It's like yeah, <laughs> yeah. I got you. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm sure you two could come up with something. And, and before I go, I just, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And I, yeah, I go up, and I, before I go, I just turn around and just be like, I love you, dudes. You know, you know. I go around, I go around with other people, but you're the group, you're the type of people I always stick around with. So, if we don't come out this unscathed. Unsca 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 just, just to let you know. And I just run up. 
I just turn to Logan and I'm like, I think Henry. I mean, uh, I think Vinny. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I think Vinny uh, maybe thinks thinks they're going to die. <laughs> <laughs> Should we do something? Uh, uh, nah, now nah, Vinny could Vinny could never die. What? I mean, it's they, Vinny. Why did they say that? Perfect. Because up until now, they've just kind of told us how much they never got attached to anyone and how they've always been alone. Letting us know that now they don't feel that way. That's nice. That's growth. Can I just say, there's something beautiful here going on with the music. Because that very song, when Vinny was saying that, was Ride or Die. I I couldn't have planned this. Wow. (laughs) But now, we have Logan. (laughs) I see, I see the chat. I see the chat is like, if I die, no, I found you all extremely attractive. <laughs> oh, come on. Come on. V- Vinny's God. You know, sorry. So, <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. Mungo and Logan keeping an eye out, coming up with a signal in case things go awry. Vinny, head down into the tunnel so that you can get up top. Now. As you go past the uh, the fake police tape, um, you're able to go in into the darkness. And here, it's quiet. It's still. You make your way through. You make your way up. And when you get up top, it's empty. The area is empty. Mm-hmm. Except for, of course, you see one person standing in the center holding a bag. And this bag is, uh, it's a black bag, though it does bulge out on, in certain places. It's almost like it's holding um, uh, a, a bust of some sort, a sculpture of some sort. And holding this, of course, you see the brown vest, you see the page boy cap, and, well, question, Vinny, Vinny, you're Mm -hmm. pretty, you're pretty quiet, right? You're pretty good Mm -hmm. at sneaking around, so, Mm -hmm. why don't you, we'll we'll do a little contest here, I'm gonna have her roll a die six, Mm -hmm. and I'm gonna have you roll two, since you do have quite a bit more experience on her. And see. so whoever has the higher roll, you choose the higher of your two. And okay. I just have one to work with. Okay. I got a six. I got a six too. Oh, perfect. Perfect. So in this case, I'd say that you're as you're sneaking up, you're you're silent. You're mm-hmm. it's perfect. It's casual to the point where um when she finally does say something, mm-hmm. she says, um, "You're late." Yeah, I think I think yeah, I, because like I don't think um, Vinny wants to sort of sneak up because I think Vinny knows like who is Vinny, who is like they're dealing with. So I guess it's like. Vinny's not trying to be sneaky, but it's oh, like, you know, okay. cautious enough. But, 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 but I, I think it makes sense because it's like, you know, cause, still cautious. It's like because the authorities are, right. are around, but not too cautious to the point where it's like, it's not supposed to, yeah, like sneak up upon cats. cats. But um, I think, yeah, I think like uh, Vinny just comes out of like the entranceway to the rooftop, you know, hands, both hands stuck in the pockets of her overcoat and just yeah walking in the walking in the rain just slowly and you could see like the i guess like she's still wearing like a sort of like a i would say a red fedora why not so it's like you know you see the glints of the her uh, of their um her uh sort of ginger ruby reddish like pixie cuts underneath it and uh she's like in a typical noir scene just like tips the fedora up and it's just like well, I wouldn't miss it for the world. I, I, I didn't think that you would. I didn't think that you would ever operate under another alias. 
And I didn't think you would be either. I mean, if I'm talking to either Catherine or the Lime Leopard. Uh, I... Wait. What are you talking about? So you're not the Lime... You're not the Lime Leopard. And you're, you're not... No, no, I'm not. Um, I usually go by the fox instead. I, I, I knew that, but I thought that I, I'm, I'm supposed to make the drop off to the, the lime leopard here. Oh dear! Oh dearie me! Seems like we've gotten ourselves into some sort of mistaken identity. Tell me, um, Catherine, when is the last time you got in contact with this lime leopard person? I think at this point, she, uh, um, Vinny's just walking around, pacing, just surveying the, the, the whole environment. Just be like, yeah. Wow. We're going to cut away from this for just a second. Mungo and Logan, how are things going on your signal? Hmm. Probably should have been thinking about that. Um, <laughs> you're good. Maybe the two of you are talking about it right now. As far as I mean, Mongo definitely was like trying to be like, what, 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 what should the signal be like the whole time? <laughs> oh my God, there's a fire. <laughs> <laughs> Um, like where? <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, so we're near the entrance to the catacombs, right? Uh, to the tunnels that would lead yeah. up into the Arc de Triomphe. Okay. Um, so we're in the tunnels. Vinny's gone down said tunnels to go into the catacombs or into no. the the tunnels that are under or is under Vinny the back Arc up? De Triomphe. Um Vinny is up up on top of the Arc de Triomphe. Right. Um, as right, far right. as where you're posted, you can choose. Uh, as far as like whatever would give you the best vantage point for anyone coming by. Right. Do we know what entrance points? are what the entrance how many entrance points there are to go up yes i'd say i'd say this there are two ways into uh the area that would take you up but as far as the area that takes you up there's just the one if not for maybe like a, a fire escape ladder right um Yeah, I don't know. But yeah. I mean, just screaming something is just not going to be loud enough. What, uh, if, what if we jump up and down? I don't think Vinny will see us. Uh, okay. They're probably having to deal with whatever's happening up there. Um... Maybe if the authorities come around, we can just direct them somewhere else. I don't know how we'd get Vinny's attention all the way down here. Yes, perhaps you're right. Perhaps we're better off uh, forming some sort of distraction down here for the authorities. Um, well, one of us can provide a distraction, and then the other one of us can sort of um, attempt to... Um, Get up there. Yeah. Um, Maybe sort of stall the authorities, as it were. Yeah. I mean, if there's a car nearby, we could always park a car in front of the entrance. Or is that too drastic? Ooh. I mean... 
L Logan's like got an influence from Mungo as being an aristocrat, but also as being a hooligan from Vinny. Mungo doesn't know who he is anymore. <laughs> <coughs> Great. Um. Uh, yeah, no, I think Logan's like that's a that's a that's a great idea. I think one of us should stay down here, block the path, make a distraction, and as soon as they come around, the other can run up and tell Vinny that someone's coming. Would you rather make the distraction down here or run up to Vinny should the time come? Um, I suppose run up. I'm not very good at dealing with authority figures. That's fair. Good chat. Good By, point. Which I mean, I'm a bit intimidated. That's okay. It's okay, sir. These things take time. Great. Um, With that, we'll cut back up. Back up to Vinny and Kat. And she says, I've, I've never... I've never really met her face to face. I've spoken... I have spoken to her, but generally I get my my orders through other other people. Oh, you're muted, Henry. They do know it's a her. That's for sure. Yes, yes. Mm. And what... <laughs> Well, I mean, what made you think that it was me? You know I always operate by the fox. That's just how things are. Because you're here. Um, she That's true. That I would, she would meet me here. That's very fair. That's very, very fair. And I don't blame you for that, Catherine. I just don't have a good feeling about this. That's what this, and like she reaches into the bag mm -hmm. and pulls out this um the the bust um mm -hmm. of this and it's this um this bust of Marcus Aurelius oh that has been taken from the Louvre oh wow wow so you, so you told you tell me that you have basically under the mist of everything that's going on stolen that and found your, say, your way up here to the Art of Triumph. Well, I, a, a, as far as the actual thievery part, I, I didn't have a hand in that. I, I'm just, I'm just here to do the drop off. Of course, I, I, I was in charge of the parking area, but, mm -hmm. but then I was supposed to take the, the, the art and uh, drop it here in, Hand it off here. This would be my chance to meet her face to face and talk with her face to face. Mm. Right. So who is the one who actually gave you who who was the one who actually did do the actual thievering? Was just one of her one of her goons? One of her I I don't know. I just know that they when I was mm. done, when I had mm. finished, I went over mm. to the catacombs. I I uh I dropped off the the money mm -hmm. and I received this. Mm -hmm. Be careful which friends that you side with, Catherine. Roll three die six for me for a perception. Okay. They get a six. Only one success. Great. I'd say that you do note that up here, of course, there are the little um, telescopes that you can put a coin in to, to mm -hmm. view out from. But there's mm -hmm. also, um, it looks like someone's left a little, uh, a little bag uh, mm -hmm. underneath one of these. Hmm. I think I like, like I see the bag and I like you know gesture to um, cats to be like, and just like. Yes. Yeah, just like 
look at tell her to like look towards like the telescopes. Oh. Like yeah, there's like a bag. Um I that that must have been here. Must have. Let's check it out. And I just like Yeah, let's um just 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 uh, go along with her. Just check out the bag. See 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 what it is. Okay. Yeah, I, I'm still wearing my gloves, so yes. I I can. I'd be like, let me do this. Don't want your fingerprints all over it. And I just like gently open the bag, see what's inside. So you open the bag and you see uh, all of these um, different passports of different countries. And they all have pictures of Catherine. Um, you see some money stashed away, and you also see a big stack of those lime leopard calling cards. And she says, I've, 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 I've never seen any of those in my life. I mean, no role needed. I, I can tell that she's telling the truth, right? It's pretty clear. Um, yeah, like to the point where I, I'd say you probably have to yeah. help uh, to keep her from even dropping the bag with yeah. the. Yeah, 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 yeah. Bucks. I just like gently. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. It's just like, it's like, oh, dear Catherine. I think it's like you've been hook, you've been hoodwinked. And at this point you would hear um, Mungo and Logan. What's your signal? Because Mungo and Logan, um, the two of you see before you hear red and blue lights. And then you hear the sirens as police cars are on their way here. So I think the plan was that Logan is going to stall the police while Mungo goes. Mungo runs up to um, to find Vinny. Yeah. Perfect, perfect. So I'll start with Mungo, and then I'll see how Logan will stall. Mungo, you run down. You run past mm -hmm. the tape. You run into the darkness, um, and you make your way up, up, up. And uh, Vinny, as y'all realize, you, you see Mungo's head pop up. Um, and then Mungo, you see Vinny. You see Catherine there. She's holding that bag. Uh, the two of them are inspecting this other bag. What do you say? What do you do, Mungo? Uh, sorry to interrupt whatever is happening here, but uh, the police out of here. Um, Logan's uh, down uh, dealing with them, but I, I thought we should leave. Right. Okay. And that's like, right. And I just quickly zip up the bag and then just like hoist it over my, my shoulder. Uh -huh. And then I just turn to Catherine and just like, we'll deal with this later. Come with us right now. All right. Um, yeah. And take the bus with you. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So... Mm -hmm. Where are you going to go to leave? Are you going to go try to go back down and take the other way? Or are you going to take the fire escape? Because mm. cause I don't know what Logan's doing. So I think... I, I, I think know where he Mongo is, but knows. yeah, I don't know what he's doing. Okay. Oh, you're right. Yeah. So I'd be like, okay, let's meet at the fire. I mean, the fire escape, we could probably... It's still near there. So I guess we could like just... Is it in vicinity of where Logan could see us, or? Um, I would say, unfortunately not. Okay. Hmm. Unless you were to risk doing some sort of signal from up top. Yeah. <laughs> then I think I think, <laughs> um, Vinny would just go ahead and just do like you know how like foxes they don't really they you know what does the fox say foxes just do like this incredibly weird yelping thing that they do. 
<laughs> so I think so I think just um Vinny at the top of her uh, at the top of their voice just goes like a like oh god I don't want to like <laughs> disturb anyone else. It's like <laughs> great. Great. On top of the so whatever, whatever, whatever signal that is. You want to do either a wit and sharp or a creativity and passion here. Oh, I got I got more um, on um, wit and sharp, I think. Okay. Okay, yeah. Okay. Two successes. All right. You're able to communicate to Logan. Logan is able to see you. What what are you trying to like you you have his attention. What are you trying to yeah. indicate? It's like yeah, we're just we're just getting we're just getting out. Like like like, like we're leaving. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, Logan, you've got that bit of information. The police cars are pulling up. And the police are le are exiting their vehicles. One person, one of them, goes up to you and says, um, "What are what are you what are you doing here?" All right, so I'm going to uh, use one of my sin cues because this is important. Um, actually, the sin cue might trigger once they start, once I start stalling, but I'll be like, oh, good, you're here. I've been told this is the, the Eiffel Tower, but I don't think it is. I really do not think it is. Um, I was told the Eiffel Tower is pointy. This is clearly not pointy. Uh, this is either false advertising or I've been given wrong directions. Now, how, how do you explain yourself? Okay. Okay. Um, uh, so and the 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 sin, the yeah, the sin cue I'll use. Um, I mean, assuming you know, I'm trying to rile them up. They're trying to get past me. I don't want to let them go through. And I'm going to use uh, unflappable. Your years of working with different employers mean that you've endured your fair share of tantrums and threats. Through your experience, you know how to keep your cool and stand your ground. You cannot be intimidated. Oh, okay. Okay. So every time they're just like, we need to go up. I'm like, no, no, I will not let you get away with this. Is this Paris? Is this the city of love? It does not feel <laughs> like it right now, does it? And I will just forever stand my ground. Great, um, great. So with that, you're able to hold them back. Hold them back clearly enough for all three of them to make it down the fire escape, down the other side. Vinny, Mungo, what are y'all going to do with Catherine? Yeah, I think I think we have to we have to sort of. I feel like she's going to be in important to somehow deal with the situation at hand. So I think it might be best for us for to let her go along with us, to hide with us. I'm not sure. Hmm. Mungo isn't quite sure what's going on and is just sort of like giving Catherine a little bit of like a weird look because he's like, thinks she's this like hardened criminal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Honestly, very fair. Honestly, very, very, very fair. Yeah. And but I a think, little bit uh, afraid of her too. Yeah. But I think, I think... I think it is up to Vinny to sort of like, you know, make sure that she is taking care of Catherine, you know, because mm -hmm. I feel like because possibly because that she has been taken advantage of, she does not want it. I think that really, I think something sets off um, Vinny to be like, how dare you? You know, people have taken advantage of her family before and now someone has taken advantage of her. That does not stand at all. And she will see to this to the very end. So I think I think when she's down, uh, or when Vinny's down, um, I think just there's this like determined look and just probably like 
silent fury on on their face. Mm-hmm. And I think as soon as possible, like uh, just uh, Vinny just gives like a, a like a little like hunting whistle, I would say, at the back, loud enough for Logan to hear. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Great. Mm-hmm. Great. So, yeah, you're you're able to get down. You've got Cat. You make that whistle, Logan. You hear it very clearly, very distinctly. Um, it's like a. As far as like your y'all's communications go, it feels very much like a, we're good, we're clear. So, Logan, you've bought enough time. You're good to go. The the police end up going in, going up, and I'd say even as you're, I don't know if you're gonna stick around here, Logan, or if you're going to leave, but. At the very least, you would note that you would hear shouting of, there's there's no one here. It looks like you're muted, Liam. I am indeed, sorry. Uh, I am definitely going to exit stage left. Uh, <laughs> what, what is that you say? Eiffel Tower? That way? Thank you very much. It's about time I found somebody to help me in this city and walk away. <laughs> great, great. Okay, okay. So with the police having swarmed this location, finding nothing, I'd say the three of you are able to meet back up. What do you want to do? Where do you want to go? Mm-hmm. I mean, I reckon there's an opportunity here for us. Uh, I mean, somebody try to set her up uh, with everything that is in the bag. Uh, But that means we can also, in turn, use all that stuff to set somebody else up. That is exactly what I have in mind as well. So who do we set up? I reckon we we set up Mungo's parents. I mean, what? <laughs> <laughs> no, they're lovely individuals, and unfortunately, they have been brought into this situation without, uh, you know, their own accord. I was thinking of the gentleman from Porto. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and then I think it's like right. So first things first, we definitely need to go get back to the Louvre. Because from what Catherine here has told me, is the fact that someone, it, so apparently the lion leopard has a, a reach beyond any comprehension, I think, here in Paris. Someone did the stealing and told Catherine to drop it off and then decide to somehow blame it on Catherine. So there's a, there's a big possibility that the actual lion leopard and her and her cronies, we know it's a her. Her cronies are definitely going to be in the vicinity. I mean, are we are we sure we can catch or that we need to catch the lime leopard? I'm no, sure. I don't think we need to. We just need to know. We just need to foil one of these plants and actually use it in our favor. I think that's the best thing that we can do. I mean, that sounds like more work than putting all of this evidence in the back of Porto, guys. That's also fine as well. <laughs> well, we can't catch two lime leopards. No, of course not. So, so we'll just, if, we'll, yes, we'll just do one. We'll just frame one. I, I, I think it's easier to frame the person we already know where they are and where they're. That's fine as well. Than trying That's to fine. find the one that may or may not be in a place. That's fine as well. Mm. Yep. Are no, y'all, I. Are y'all doing mm-hmm. this discussion in front of Catherine? <laughs> yeah, probably. Yeah. yeah, definitely. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I'd say at this point, um, as the two of you are like going back and forth, Mungo, you would notice that Catherine has started crying, realizing that this person that she has looked up to for so long has betrayed her. Uh, that Mungo now is uh, looking 
frightened again, but this time he's frightened because the woman is crying next to him and he doesn't know what to do. Mm-hmm. He just sort of, like, offers her a handkerchief. And uh, she'll she'll gladly take it and just, just start, like, uh, wiping away her tears, blowing her nose into it. And she says, Why does... Why does everyone just use me like this? We'll, we'll come now, you know, just because you are, you know, a um, criminal, it doesn't mean that um, you're, you're not a worthy hey. member of society. I, I, I just pause on some of the mongos. It's like, um, I'm sorry, she's not a criminal. She's just unfortunately been taken advantage of. That's didn't not steal anything. No, no. She the only thing that she's been told is to basically drop off that bust to the Arc du Vion. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, I'm very sorry for the confusion. <laughs> oh, it, it, oh, it's, it's right. yeah. And um, I think with that moment, I think uh, Vinny just actually stoops down. I think just crouches down, it's like to be on the same level as as Catherine. And I just say, Catherine, you know the reason why I became a fixer, right? I don't know if I told you this for the first time I helped your parents when to get out of that situation with like the local I, gang. I, I, I'm, I, I'm not sure. Uh, you just seem like a good person. Well, it wasn't always like that at the start. Didn't have anyone. Um, I didn't have anyone to actually, you know, to grow up with. I have no family. I was an orphan. And all I knew that I was really good at convincing others to, you know, to fix their problems one way or the other. But at the time, I didn't know right from wrong. All I, all I knew was I had a very convincing voice, a very convincing personality. But sometimes that rub pe- rubs people the wrong way. Until that's when I met. That's when I met the spider, my mentor. Mm-hmm. And he was the first person that taught me how to discern right from wrong and actually to use my abilities for good. I didn't know anything either. I was also taken advantage of too in terms of what I could do. But he helped me guide out uh, to basically guide through that process to get me out of that toxic circle. I actually use that powers for good. So don't ever feel like you've been taken advantage of. It all happens to us, no matter what. We would rather believe in something than doubt someone. And that I feel like that's your personality too, Catherine. Yeah. And so I hope that this is a great lesson to you. First lesson, you should never, never, ever, and I look at Logan, when someone offers a high price when they, you know, uh, give someone a ticket, don't take it because some because they may have some ulterior motives to do so. Always be the one in charge of the scenario. Secondly, it is okay to fail. It is okay to know you've been betrayed, but it's how to deal with it that matters. And that's what we're going to do right now. All right. All right. Yes. Yeah. Right. So we're going to frame someone. A really, really bad dude <laughs> who's been pestering us for a long time. Are you sure you're up for it, Catherine? Uh, sure. Uh, w- what, what do I need to do? Just come along with us. Okay. 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 I think we're just so, off back go? to the, off back to the Louvre, I guess. Yeah, um, I reckon if we can get back to to the cars, to the parking lot, then that will be the best place to plant the evidence. Great, back to the parking lot. Okay, okay. Um, I'd say by this point. Um, there, there might still be just one or two police cars at the Louvre, and they're just talking, interviewing 
the, um, the, the, the people in charge here. A lot of the, um, a lot of the event goers, the aristocrats, as well as the competition have left because of the fire panic. Um, I'd say there's probably like a fire truck or two that are inspecting things because they have to make sure. You get back to the parking lot and I'd say you would notice that there is, um, there's a gentleman here who is uh, doing the last of the, um, the, the tickets, the tickets that, uh, of course, Cat was in charge of also taking earlier in the evening. Um, there might just be like two or three cars left in the structure. So what would you like to do? Um, I think I'll offer to, I'm, I might go in and try to find this guy again, the Porto guy, uh, because okay. as soon as he sees me again, uh, I'll grab his attention essentially. And so you, that should give you guys plenty of time. Uh, obviously that's assuming he's still here. Yeah. Uh, Ooh, actually. I look at Catherine. Catherine, um, oh, what, what's the dude's name? I forgot. <laughs> uh, well, why don't you? He, he did have a name, right? <laughs> yes, yes, he did. Um, why don't you roll? Uh, God, three die six for me. God, Jesus Christ. Okay, I got a, I got a five. Okay. Nice. Okay. Scrambling my mind. <laughs> God, I should take notes. Okay. So, um, I'd say it, it takes you a moment to, to think back. But of course, he is um, the... Oh, hang on one second. I've got, I've got two names here, but I want to make sure that I've got the right one. Um, okay, there we go. Sorry, a few of mine have gotten a little bit scrambled. Uh oh. But... Okay, okay. The name is Tomas Borba. Tomas Borba. Tomas Borba. And I think I just say to Catherine, it's like, hey, Catherine, Tomas Borba, have you given a ticket out to that dude? Yes, um, I remember. Uh, he was. He was. Well, in fact, he was particularly easy to get a lot of a lot of money out of. <laughs> it seemed that he wanted the the most deluxe of packages, which of course the he same does. Same as the normal package. Of course he does, and I think that's a slight chuckle comes out. And I was like, "Great, do you have any idea where he parked or where you parked the car?" Yes, um, and. Like she, she like takes a look, and you sh you see her eyes immediately. Like she kind of scans over a certain section, and she says, I, "I'm I'm sorry. It looks like he's not here anymore." Hmm. Did he arrive in just one car, or? Yes, yes. Uh, it was quite a fancy one. Um, hmm. It was very loud. Very loud. Okay. Well, that's a that's. Hmm. Is there any way to bring him back? Is the question. I mean, we can always go back to Plan B, which which was the the plan you originally suggested. Like you said, the lime leopard may have created this whole distraction to steal something from the Louvre. Now. Yeah. So mm. maybe we just revert back to that and try to catch the actual thief. Mm, maybe. It'll be nice for the dude, um, Tomas, to be there as well. But I think I was more on board with your plan of framing him because it's like, yeah, we could just <laughs> screw, screw the lime leopard. But if that's the case, then I guess we just have to deal with whoever the lime leopard is in the Louvre, wow. get them accounted for. While y'all are taking a look in the parking structure, mm -hmm. the um, 
the the, the man who's been uh, taking the tickets, um, finishing things up, sees Catherine and says, what are you doing here? And she like looks over and she looks over to y'all see I'd say in this case she's almost uh, looking to Vinny to see what she should do mm. and I think I just like is this an indication of like this dude was one of the people who, who, who dropped her to stuff from, from that interaction um, I wouldn't say that he was the one who dropped her the mm -hmm. the uh this uh bust, but I mm -hmm. would say that he's in the circle. He's in the circle. Mm -hmm. Yes. And I think oh what would Vinny do? What would Vinny do? What would Vinny do? I think Vinny knowing the fact that uh this yeah, it's like they are in the circle. I think I think just says, um, oh, um, sorry about that. Um, we were just looking for our car and uh we actually left one of our tickets along with this individual here. Um, and I think there might have been some of the mix up a mix up. So um we were wondering if whether you had the tickets as well. We were really trying our best to uh, you know leave Paris as soon as possible. Is it okay if you can help for a while? Did you do anything to hide the bag? Yes, of course, yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> as, as we're doing that. We're all kind of stepping closer, like right in front of the bag. <laughs> mm -hmm. Start whistling. Mm -hmm. With that, he he initially says, all right. And then he, he like looks at the stuff and then you kind of see him pause and freeze for a second. Mm -hmm. And then he throws his remaining tickets at you and starts to run. <laughs> what do you <laughs> mean? run where like out or like <laughs> yeah he's like it looks like he's running towards um like it's not towards one of the exits it looks like he's going towards like one of the corners of the parking structure and likely intends to vault over and out who's chasing Am I chasing? I'm ready to chase. I, I I don't I don't mind. Um, my goal right now is just to get into a loop to return to return this stuff. But you can if you want. I mean, split the party. You can do that. I can follow sure. him and maybe sure. I can find information. Yeah, you have you have the new Hermes uh, suit now, so you're sure you can. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Plus two okay. movement speed. Okay, cool. And it's just like, all right, I have a plan at least, but we'll meet back in the Louvre no matter what. <laughs> And I chase. What okay. about Mungo? Uh, Mungo definitely is like sort of caught between like, <laughs> like Mungo is like, mm -hmm, and then like both of them take off, and Mungo's like, and yeah, I think uh, I'll say he goes with um, with Vinny. Point. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, he's just like. Right. The potentially less violent of the two options. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So here's what I'm going to need Logan to do. Uh, first off, Logan, as you're chasing, um, in this case, I mean, I'd want to say that uh, I mean, Logan is fairly fit, right? Yeah, for sure. Okay. Okay. So then, as far as uh, as far as tackling the the, the parkour here, um, you've already had a moment earlier upon the desks. Um, I'm gonna need you to do a little bravado for me, and I will be contesting just to see just to see how well you're able to tackle the uh, the obstacles that sounds good. He's also bounding through. Alrighty. That is just one success. Okay. Okay. So first, he vaults over that wall of the parking structure. 
and he immediately darts to the side, but you're able to vault over just as quickly. Um, you're just a few steps behind, just because he took you by surprise. And you note him running down an alleyway now, down an alleyway where um, it's, it's quite dark. There aren't any street lamps or anything um, illuminating this area, but you just hear the sound of his footsteps, um, especially as he splashes in the puddles here. Um, now, I'm going to come back to you in a quick second. Uh, Vinny mm-hmm. and Mungo, y'all are with Catherine. Where y'all, y'all are going back into the Louvre? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, okay. So, where have you stashed the bag? Both bags. The bag with the bust and the bag with the the passports yeah. with Kat's yeah. face on them. Yeah, I think I think I swapped the bags with um Kat. So I'm the holding I'm I'm the one holding the bust. She's the one holding like uh the framed evidence. So Okay. Okay. Yeah. And we're just like walking back and I think trying to get to the exact same exhibit with where exactly this bust was supposed to be located. Okay. At the yeah. front entrance, there are still um, two police officers who are talking with who looks like the, um, I'd say maybe the curator of the museum. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, there are some uh, firefighters who are exiting the building right mm-hmm. now. Um, mm-hmm. And you, you kind of hear the sound of uh, uh, all clear. Um, but uh, how, how are you going to get in? Sneak in through the side entrance. Yeah, or if not, we need a distraction. Yeah. Sneak in through the side. I okay. mean, hmm? if you need someone to be a distraction, I do feel like Mungo is sort of the odd man out here. <laughs> he doesn't need to be in the loop. Yeah, it's fair. I guess we'll try, but I'll, 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 yeah, I feel like, yeah, I feel like if you want to. If you want, if you want to be a distraction, fine by me. I'm, I'm fine taking you along, and we'll find another way. But okay, um, here's, here's what, um, here's what Mungo is going to do. Okay, uh, Mungo is gonna, you know, try to use some of that newfound confidence and just like go up to the uh, police officers and be like, "Sir, sir, I saw a thief just uh, run past with um, a painting." <laughs> It was one of the was one of those from in there. Okay. <laughs> Why don't you give me a bravado and persuasion? Okay, let me see. Do I have a scene two for this? Oh, snap. Uh, I do know I used the do you don't you know who I am already? Right, right. Oh, my ten is her. You know what? Let's 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 oh, I think I, yeah, I used the luck on your side. Okay, let's roll for it. What am I rolling? Bravado and persuasion. Bravado and persuasion, that makes sense, yeah. Alright. Come on. And, and you know he's sort of like tiring on. And again, he, he is, he's not using that scene cue, but he is very much using his his sort of aristocrat status of like right. demanding attention. Yeah, yeah. Oops, that fell down. Roll that again. Okay, well, uh, just as well. That's one one success. Woo. Okay, okay. Um, uh, and so then the um, the police officers immediately turn their attention to you. The the curator seems worried and uh the curator will say uh, which 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 painting was it um and the police officers are more adamant about where where did he go oh uh, that, uh over this way I'm, I'm very much pointing away from the museum i'm like uh i'm not sure what the painting was it was something with a um it was a woman and she had like a little bit of a smile but not too much of a smile um, <laughs> <laughs> she was sort of mysterious and she didn't have any eyebrows Oh my god. And like at this point the the curator like you see his eyes widen and you see him immediately like almost faint. He puts his hand up against like one of the pillars and he's thinking Oh my gosh. I I can't believe it. Two two stolen objects in one night. Uh, but the two police officers immediately dash in the direction that you pointed. Now, that allows uh, Vinny and Kat to sprint in, to sprint in past um, 
where they were having that little uh, discussion there. Um, where are you heading, Vinny? I think to the same like exhibit where this bus was supposed to be. Okay. Great, great. So with the lights back on, although like it's sort of like that uh, semi on, so it's like it's a little bit dim, but still bright enough that if anyone were walking around, it would be pretty obvious if you stuck around too long. Mm -hmm. But you're able to make your way over to that exhibit area. And mm -hmm. of course, you do notice there's, uh, there's a bit of police tape around yeah. where this bust would be. And this mm -hmm. isn't the type of police tape that you've seen all night. This yeah, is I think real legit police tape. Okay, yeah, I think at that. Hmm. Yeah, I think yeah, just like goes ahead and then just tries to return the bus to its original place. I guess just going through like the police tape and just returning to where it is. Um, I think at this point she decides to put on the fox mask that she 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 grabbed from the store. Okay. Okay, great, great. And Catherine is like, that's a, that's a good look on you. Can't be too careful. Don't want my identity to be, you know, you know, these looks, you know, although I have done many disguises, you know, can't, you can't be too careful with these things, especially when dealing with thieves around. Right, right. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. so... Mm -hmm. We're just going to put it back and everything will be fine? No. Well, putting it back is one thing. Trying to find the people accountable, that's the other. Which is exactly what I'm going to do. All right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm. And I think with that, it's like, you never really told me about your parents, Catherine. I don't know if this, I don't know if this is the right time, but you seem, you were pretty hesitant to tell, like, um, to tell me about them. I mean, it's been so long. Like, what exactly happened? And with that, we're going to come back to you in a second. Mm -hmm. Back over to Logan. Logan, who is chasing after this gentleman, chasing after this gentleman through the alleyway. At this point, let's see which, which role I'm going to need. I'm going to need a little wit and sharp from you. Um, as you're navigating through the darkness, he's navigating through the darkness. At one point, he decides to take a risk, and you hear a trash can clatter onto the ground. It looks like he's, it sounds like he's thrown it on the ground in the hopes of tripping you up. So, it's just a matter of how well you're able to figure out on the fly where it is and uh, circumvent it. He's sacrificing some time to try to make you sacrifice more time. Yeah, fair. Uh, also, wit and sharp works, because I think as I'm chasing, my strategy is changing. I'm not trying to catch him. I'm trying to let him have a little bit of lead, but I want to see where he goes. I want to see if he's stupid oh, enough to go back to his boss. Great, great. Sounds good. Sounds good. Uh, all right, let's roll. We are looking at one success again. Okay, okay. One success is enough as you're able to, uh, you're able to um, traverse the can. But if you're trying to tail him, if you're trying to see if he's stupid enough to do this or not, um, I mean, would there be any level of uh, maybe making him believe that you did trip or that oh no I'm, I'm, I'm trying I'm, I'm trying very much to I, I'm banking on his panic it's like somebody's after me I'm just okay. keeping a distance but I very much want him to think somebody is after me I need to go tell the boss sort of thing okay okay um, In that so case. I'm if anything I'm gonna make noise like he knows I'm very much still after him great um, great to okay. kind of really put that pressure so he doesn't think, he just runs. Great, great. In this case, you're continuing your run. You continue, um, and you can hear his breathing. 
it's getting quite belabored. Um, and then you see it's like his figure uh, starts to descend as though he's going down, down into something, down steps. Yeah, I'm going to follow. All right. As you catch up, you realize that you're heading down into the catacombs right now. Um, and at this point, there's lots of the um, the, the, the police tape, the, similar to what you saw at the Arc de Triomphe. Um, and you note that, uh, like, as he goes through, he's not doing anything to duck under. He's just running straight through. You just see them kind of like um, trailing off, like one part that's attached as he runs through. Um, But then he uh, like goes into the darkness and I need you to roll three die six for me. Yes, chariots of fire playing in my head for sure. Yes. (laughs) All right, come on, three die six. We're looking at one success still. Okay, okay. At least I'm consistent. You would hear the sound of his steps kind of slip a little bit and slow down. Um, And then you see, as you reach this long straightaway, that he's disappeared. And you would suspect that he's taken a little little side turn into where there's more of that tape, though he hasn't broken it at this point. And then you hear... I... There's, there's other people. There's someone coming. Uh, maybe that's the bit where I kind of slow down and try to be a bit more sneaky about it. Okay. Okay. Um, are you going to try to sneak up and into that little passageway? Uh, sneak up or at the very least like get a peek out to kind of see who is there whether it's anybody I recognize whether there's somebody that's very obviously the lime leopard great uh, you would hear a voice say uh, you, you know better than to lead anyone down here and he says I, I didn't know what to do he was right on my tail I've got, I, 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 there's, there's three cars that haven't been returned yet, but I've got the rest of them. Here you go. And they seem to be kind of like having it out a little bit. Can I sneak a peek? See who's there? Um, I'd say in this little passageway, it's like, uh, it's initially just pitch black, but then Mm. you see a little match light. Um, and this gentleman, um, a fairly big, imposing, quite round figure. Um, and he's looking at the tickets. And then he says, um, So, uh, is, is, is Cat okay? And then the uh, other guy says, Yeah, yeah, she's, she's okay. She's fine. And you can clearly tell that this guy is trying to, trying to hide it from the other gentleman who lit the match, the rounder gentleman. All right. Uh, I mean, I'm really confused because they seem to care about Cat, and I'm wondering whether they're actually part of the Lime Leopard or not. Um, So I'm actually going to step out in the open, uh, and I'm going to say, uh, Cat is fine. She wouldn't have been if we hadn't found her. A setup by the Lime Leopard. Very low blow. And that uh, the the gentleman that was running from you immediately says, That's him! We, we gotta stop him! And, like, he starts advancing on you, but then the other gentleman just, like, grabs him by the back of the neck. And you can see, like, even though it's dark here, the match has gone out at this point, that he's just holding him back with one hand and says... What are you talking about? Oh, we found Cat. Um, up on the Arc de Triomphe, we also found a bag with lots of falsified evidence. 
uh, about her being the, the Lime Leopard. And while I'm sure she aspires to someday be this famous, uh, I find it very unprofessional uh, for someone like the Lime Leopard to throw someone like that under the bus. Just very disappointing, if I may say. I need you to roll a bravado and persuasion. Sure. To see how convincing you are. Someone finally got the clue of uh, Lime Leopard being a play on Pink Panther, so. <laughs> <laughs> We're looking at two successes this time. And he, like, stands there for a moment, and then you see him, like, uh, turn towards the other gentleman, the one that you were chasing after, and say, Is that true? And then you can kind of hear like a whimper come out from that gentleman. And then like in the darkness, you just hear uh, like a thud as mm. that gentleman throws him up against the wall and then comes towards you, the, 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 the round man. And say, yeah. You at the Arc de Triomphe? Oh, yes. I made sure the cops did not get to the wrongful culprit of these crimes. I see. Then, in that case, and you, you can kind of note that um, he, he has, like, uh, in, in spite of the darkness, like, he, he kind of steps out closer to where you are. And he looks, he looks, and he's kind of, like, tracking, like, trying to get his bearings as far as the city is concerned. And he says, then she lied to me, then. The Lion Leopard? Oh, yes, most assuredly. She must be at the Eiffel Tower, then. God damn. <laughs> We're going to run all over France. The Eiffel Tower, you say? Interesting. Yeah. What is she doing there? I thought that she was going to go... I thought she was going to go make the pickup from Cat, but it sounds like we've all been played for fools. And there I kind of go, kind of looking around at t the tickets and everything. Good sir, do you have a car? Yeah? Uh, w what are you thinking? Well, let's get to the car, shall we? Let's right. go. We've got a thief to catch. All right. Uh, and now while the two of you are going, Vinny, Mungo, what are you up to? Hopefully I've successfully gotten the attention away from... Uh, Oh yeah, from Benita. So, yes, absolutely, um, absolutely. Okay, um, I guess yeah, they've all sort of gone off in different directions. I guess I just will. I'll, I'll go into the Louvre just via the regular entrance. Great, great. Yeah, it's a little sightsee a little bit on you. Yeah, excellent, excellent. So, and also you know keep up, keep out, keep an eye out for for more danger. But mostly, I just you know have to see the Louvre. Great, Mungo, you're able to saunter way in. And Vinny. I'm I'm just waiting for Catherine's answer in terms of what happened what happened to her parents. Like what what were the the events that led up to this situation? Pretty much. Um, she says, Well, after you fixed things, um I I, I I wanted to be able to help someone too. And so I went out and I, I tried to look for you. I tried to find you and try to find the, the, the sort of people that you run with. And I thought I found someone and I saw what they, I, I saw what she could do. I saw what she was able to do with, as, as, as far as, making things happen and I just kind of saw you in her I guess 
And with that, I, I just thought maybe if I could meet her, maybe she could lead me to you. As far uh, as my yeah. parents oh. are concerned, um, they're fine. They're fine. I, I've been sending money back every time I finish a job and sending a letter back so that they know I'm fine. Mm. I've been telling them that I've been studying abroad. Um, and so far, they've been all right with it. Uh, mm. My, my part-time work, I, one time I sent a little too much money back and they, they were suspicious, but then I told them there was an advance and it worked out. Hmm. Well, I think... I think it's just, we're, we're, I think we're just like sort of like walking along like the the sort of like the gal like the galleries of the Louvre, you know, myself with like the fox mask on, and as we're like just doing like a gentle sc- stroll through the thing, just trying to think things through. And I think um, as she's talking, um, after she finishes talking, then he just goes. Well, you know, it's very admirable that you know, I'm, and I'm glad that your parents are doing fine. And I do believe that you, you're doing a good cause. I mean, in this line of work, trying to maintain good morals is, is, is walking on a very, very fine line. But to discern what's right and what's wrong, like that, that is definitely challenging, especially those definitely new to the field. I can say that with experience. However, yes. And of course, why I am good at my job is because, well, as I said, I don't have ties to anyone at the moment. Hence, when I'm able to to leave um, broken hearts, uh, uh, <laughs> a trail of broken hearts in my field. But I always would, no matter what, I always would like to get them closure in terms of, you know, uh, making sure that they're still fine, still respecting them as always if you know what I mean. But given the fact that you are still with your parents, that's the only thing I'm worried about because you still have some ties on your own. And if things go to worst, they might leave it leave back to them. So I just want affirmation from you, Catherine. Are you sure you still want to do this? You could say yes, you could say no. I just want to know, despite everything that's happened, where do you stand now? Um, yes, yes, uh, at the very least, as far as, as far as she's concerned, I don't want her to be able to do this to anyone else. If we can find a way to stop that, I, I'm on board. That's the affirmation I need. And I think I just actually give her my calling card. Like the one with the actual fox on it. <laughs> I'll stamp, which I will pull yeah. up on the stream right now real quick. Yeah. Um, but like as as you do that, of course, Mungo, you walk in and you see Vinny yeah. fox mask on, handing the card mm-hmm. to um, mm-hmm. Cat. Yeah. And I just say to the cat, this is my one true calling card. I have no other answers. And if you speak to any of the circles, just know that if you want to find me, just call the fox. <laughs> nice. Nice. Okay, mm-hmm. great, great. Mm-hmm. So, from here, what's the plan? Where are you going? What are you yeah. doing? We still have the bag of the false evidence, right? Yes. Okay. I yeah, just talk to Mungo. It's like, okay, Mungo, any, what's the situation now outside in terms of like the security and the police? Oh, well, I uh, actually came up with a rather clever ruse, uh, if I say so myself. Uh, so <laughs> they are distracted uh, for the moment. Mm. Perfect. I'm not sure how long that will last, though. And of That's course, her, there but, probably mm-hmm. are other security here. So. Okay, right. Well, I don't really know exactly. I thought they were going to be here in, in the Louvre, but it turns out they're not. So, 
Yeah. Could, could this be the, the the moment where I kind of pull up at the front and I'm just like bam 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 bam. bam, bam. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Get yes. It. Mm. Yeah. It's like come on, let's go, let's go. Honking the horn. Great. Yeah. Excellent. <laughs> Excellent. Okay. Okay. So Logan pulls up. Y'all are here. And when there's the big burly man with me as well. He immediately exits the car and runs up to Catherine and hugs her. And uh it's like she she's kind of like um it's 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 very similar to when say uh a a a, a teen or a, a mm-hmm. child is like um the parent thought that they were uh hurt or something or caught mm-hmm. in a disaster and then they suddenly see them and it's like the the child's like yeah i i'm fine i'm okay mm-hmm. um but he seems like so grateful mm-hmm. and then he looks up and sees you Vinny. of course you've mm-hmm. seen him before you've mm-hmm. talked with him before and he says so you you took care of her. You took care of cat. Well, took part of it. I at least returned the bus to where it rightfully belongs. And now, now it's the, and I just hold up the bag with like the falsified innocent. Now, to find the person who did this. Yeah. And you you can kind of see like, he, he's holding back a little bit in like in front of Catherine, but as soon as she gets in the car, you kind of see him seething. Mm-hmm. Um, he's boiling. He's angry at what's gone on, what's happened. Mm-hmm. Um, so, all of you pile into the car. Mm-hmm. Where are you going? The Eiffel Tower. Yeah, it's like, where are we going exactly? <laughs> it's like, low yeah. <laughs> Also, I just realized. You should have left your card at the bus to say the fox returned this. <laughs> oh, <laughs> actually, can can yeah, go for it. Yeah, can we can we say that? Like, there's like a little calling card. It's like and behind it's like yeah, the fox returned this. Uh, absolutely. Mm-hmm. absolutely, perfect. Thank you, thank you, Logan. That's actually a really fox smart idea. Return this. <laughs> great, great. So yeah, as soon as everybody's in the car, like the last door's not even slammed shut yet. Uh, Logan just spills out um, and he's just like Eiffel Tower she got us she got us all and just like goes and like freaking drifts throughout yeah. the streets and just yeah. goes for the Eiffel Tower as quickly as Mango possible Mango is just like oh. yeah. <laughs> Great. yeah Great. I think I and I think like the man and Vinny are like in the front seats and you just see like the same seething anger <laughs> Even though Vinny is wearing the, the mask right now, it's like the seething anger of both of them determined Absolutely. to catch this. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. So y'all speed through speed to the Eiffel Tower. And here, of course, it is still it is still raining. It is still quite windy. You still hear a bit of the um, thunder. See a little bit of the lightning, though it seems a little bit farther off at this point. You make your way and here, There's none of the caution. Though, when you get here, it looks like the place is closed. It looks like, um, I mean, at this point, timing-wise, it would be closed. And especially with the weather, no one's going to be going up at the top. To the top, I mean. Mm -hmm. So, what is your plan of action? Are all all five of you going up there i know our round gentleman definitely mm-hmm. wants to go up there but yeah cat will listen to you Vinny. Mm-hmm. though she is also she kind of wants to see for herself mm-hmm. yes exactly and i think she deserves that so i think i'm gonna go with the round gentleman and then i take her along with us as well okay okay mm-hmm. how about mungo and logan I think Mungo's along for the ride at this point. <laughs> Ooh. Okay. Mungo's just like, I don't know exactly what is happening, but yes, I am coming. <laughs> great. Great. Uh, Logan? I, I think I'm not muted. No. I'm not muted. No, you're not. No, you're good. Uh, <laughs> for a change. Uh, 
yes, I think for once, um, uh, Logan is going to do the whole uh, look at the back door sort of situation. So he's going to start looking for exits and stuff. And just, just in case the lion leopard manages to slip away, mm -hmm. he can just be right there to corner them. Great. Great. Um, so four of you go up and it being not not as lit up um, with the rainfall it's quite dark it's quite mysterious you get up slowly steadily eventually you reach the top could I have both of you roll three die six I'll have Logan roll three die six as well sounds good all of us no just uh, all, of us all, three, all of you roll three die six, but okay. uh, Mungo's and Vinny's are for upstairs. Okay. <laughs> okay. Ooh. A one okay. success. One success. Trying to get successes because I got nothing. I got a two, three, and a four. Nothing for <laughs> Mungo. Mm -hmm. I got one success. Oh. One success. Great. Great. So, Vinny. You immediately spot up here. Mm -hmm. There is, um, there's no one here, except underneath one of the observation telescopes. There's a bag. Hmm. I think at this point, I also like just just motion to others, just don't come near, and I just motion forward. Again, gloved hands, open the bag once again. Okay, great. Um, Logan, did you get any successes? Yeah, I got one. Great, great. So I'd say down here you do see a, um, a you do see a fairly nice car as it's um, driving down the street. Um, it's, uh, I'd say for, for this time period, it would definitely be one that belongs to the uh, aristocracy. Um, and as you do, uh, you do notice um, someone wave from inside. Um, a beautiful woman with long brown hair. Um, and she looks familiar. Um, and she gives you a little smirk. And... In the bag, Vinny, as you open that up, inside, there's just two things. You do see the card, the card with the black background and the lime green leopard. Mm -hmm. And also a little note that says... Thanks for the kiss. And with that, we've reached our time. That is where we'll end this session. <coughs> and we'll see what happens next time. Oh, boy. So, what? So... <coughs> I feel like there's a car chase in my future. <laughs> <laughs> what a cliffhanger. <laughs> wow. So, thank you so much for tuning in. Thank y'all so much for playing. Um, before we roll out, uh, of course, I want to say um, big thanks to Fleur and Chelsea for... Uh, creating such an incredible game which just released recently so here we go I'm going to put down um, the link in case you want to get your hands on it which I mean I've had such a blast playing it I've had such a blast running it I highly highly recommend it um, and big thank you to our viewers for sticking around y'all have been absolutely wonderful thank you so much uh for your support 
uh, for the problems that we were able to create for the players and also for the re-rolls and all the incredible gift subs. Holy crap. Um, I want to make sure that I can give everyone, everyone thanks real quick. Um, thank you, Minutus. Thank you, Hungriest Clone. Thank you, Tactical Tommy Gun for the raid. Thank you, A Geek of One's Own. Oh my gosh. I didn't plan that rhyme, but somehow we got Clone and Geek of One's Own in there. It all works out. Y'all are absolutely wonderful. Thank you so much. Now let's kick it over to our cast. Um, cast, as I go through each of you, would you mind telling me who you are, who you've been this evening, and uh, where people can find you if you want them to? Anything to promote? Let's start with Kaylee with Henry on deck. Hello. Yes, I have been Kaylee as as Mungo, who really just went through a lot uh, <laughs> in this installment. Um, Let's see, um, you can find me um, working as an adventure specialist over at mastermindadventures.com, uh, where there are many, many um, uh, professional uh, game, uh, tabletop games, both online, some in person as well, depending on where our GMs are, um, all, all over, <laughs> including the internet, so yeah, check it out. Fantastic, thank you so much, Kaylee. Um, let's go over to Henry with Liam on deck. So, hi, I've been Henry, and uh, no, I'm still, I keep saying I've been Henry, but I'm still Henry. I've been Vinny Volpez. My name is Henry. Uh, I I play Vinny Volpez, and this absolute wow, what a what a twist upon twist upon twist of a game. But uh, God, again, nothing to promote. I'm just super happy to be here. I'm super looking forward to like the next session where we find out who exactly is the Lime Leopard is. <laughs> My goodness, so many red herrings here. Great. I mean, I wish there was a, uh, I wish there was a picture named the Red Herring just, just for this bit. <laughs> but whatever. <laughs> Fantastic. Thank you so much, Henry. Let's go mm -hmm. over to Liam with myself on deck. Hey all, so I have been and still am Liam, and uh, today I was playing Logan. Uh, I mean, I don't know if he's a member of the help or a well-to-do or an aristocrat anymore, uh, but he's uh, he's been having a lot of fun and getting a lot of standing against tonight, so thank you, Matt, for that. Yes. Um, Otherwise, uh, you can find me on my own Twitch channel at a geek of one's own, uh, where I do a lot of role playing games. Uh, I try to stick to like lesser known role playing games, do reviews, interviews, and games. Uh, I've just come back from a hiatus overseas, so in the next week or two, I will be starting up again and also celebrating one year on Twitch. So definitely come check it out. Keep an eye out for that, and I'll see you there. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Liam. Wonderful as always. All of y'all. All of y'all. Wonderful as always. Oh my gosh. Roll for Felicity. Thank you so much for the raid. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I'm so sorry. We're just wrapping up right now, but I appreciate you so much. I appreciate y'all so much. Oh my gosh. I'm Matt. I've been uh, the director, uh, the, the GM, if you will, of this game. And I'm just, my heart is just so warm that I get to play with such amazing people. I get to play for such amazing people. And we just get to share in this together. So, oh my gosh, as always, as always, this is, it's time to sign off, y'all. Wherever you are, whenever it happens to be, I hope y'all have a wonderful morning afternoon or evening and until next time stay safe and take care bye